right, so today we're going to be talking about how to understand the different things that go are going on in a system that dictate how a charge is set and how a charge is checked. Okay? We tend to think of air conditioning systems in terms of an air handler and a condenser, which are a standardized grouping that we use in split system and residential applications. But as you could take, I could build an air conditioner, I could take a condenser, put it over there, I could take a compressor, put it on the other side of the building, an evaporator over here, expansion line, I mean metering device over there, and just hook them all together and it would still work. Thinking of an air conditioner like this, in terms of its four components and its four lines and the different states of the refrigerant in the lines, is much more accurate and it will help you think much more clearly about what it is that you're accomplishing. Okay? If there's anything that you can memorize in the industry that will help you as far as it pertains to what I'm going to talk about next, it's to, it's to stand there and write over and over again and say over and over again, compressor, condenser, metering device, evaporator, compressor, condenser, metering device, <laughs> I'm not kidding. Discharge line, liquid line, expansion line, suction line. Discharge line, liquid line, expansion line, suction line. When I went into AC school the first day, my instructor introduced me to everyone. Hey, yeah, this is the room. Here's the tool room. Da, 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 da. Okay, here's the board. All right, I'm going to write these four. All right, here's what it is. Compressor, condenser, metering device, evaporator. Okay, I'm going to erase it. Do that for the next two hours. Come back to me when you're done. So you have it memorized. And then, okay, I'm done. All right, now here's the next thing. Discharge line, liquid line, expansion line, suction line. All right, now now write in the states. Now write now split your now split it in half based on the state of the refrigerant. Now split it in half based on high side and low side, because you do it the other way here too. So this is low side, this is high side, and then this is um, this is the vapor side. This is the liquid side. It's actually saturated liquid as it comes out the other side here, but you know, and so you just start to kind of build on that, and then you. And then he taught us, you know, to feel through the system with our hands. You know, all right, this is what a suction line should feel like. This is what a liquid line should feel like. Ouch, that's what a discharge line should feel like. No, seriously. Because then it gives you an indication, especially when you're newer to the, to the trade, to start to be able to tell, ouch, that's not the liquid line. You know, that's the discharge line. That's, I mean, that, that is what you end up doing. Um, not that I'm necessarily telling you to grab a discharge line here, but this is key to this. Because if you don't ever get this, then you won't ever get what I'm about to talk about next. So to start with, let's go through the different states of what occurs inside this system. So we've got our compressor, which is a giant, giant pump. It actually compresses the refrigerant, okay? So what state is the refrigerant in right here? Okay. High temperature vapor. High temperature vapor. High pressure, high temperature vapor. What, what state is the refrigerant in here? This is the evaporator coming back. We got our direction here. We know this is our compressor. Low temperature, vapor. Low temperature, low pressure vapor. Okay, so it goes into the compressor, low temperature, low pressure vapor, comes out of the compressor, high temperature, high pressure vapor, right? Okay. Um, why doesn't it just become liquid as soon as it's compressed? As you increase pressure, you're also increasing the uh, energy per volume. Correct. So you're making it hotter as you compress it. Correct. You, it has the same amount of heat it had before. You're not actually increasing the amount of heat, but you're increasing the temperature. Do you remember how we talked about that? Because by, by reducing the amount of volume that it has to operate in, you're exciting the molecules, so the molecules are moving faster. So it's, it's directly proportional, meaning that the more you compress it, compress it the hotter it gets. So through comp you can never turn something into a liquid through, because as you compress it, it just gets hotter and hotter and hotter. So you've got to dissipate that heat in order to condense it. In order to create it, in order to turn it into a liquid, you've got to allow that heat to dissipate. Okay? So we reveal heat, we expose it by compressing it and driving the temperature up. And now by compressing it and driving the temperature up, now it flows through the condenser coil. Okay? So now what is the state of the refrigerant right here? Liquid. Yeah. The state of it is here. Now it's a liquid. Because in the condenser, the condenser condenses, you have high temperature, high pressure vapor going into it, it condenses, and then it comes out as a liquid. Okay? Now, what is the name of this line? The liquid line. <laughs> That's a tricky one, right? Okay. Liquid line because it's liquid. What's the name of this line? Discharge. Okay, how are they different? The only difference in pressure, though, is actually the pressure drop through the condenser. It's actually just pressure drop. So it's it's just the same the pressure state. because you're forcing it together. It's that it's changed state because now you're dissipating heat off of it and allowing it to condense down, settle down into a liquid state fully. Does that make sense? Okay. So high pressure, high temperature vapor here goes through the condenser, condenses, come out, comes out liquid, hits this. What is this? What are some common metering devices? TXV. Piston. Piston is a term that's used. Accurator. Uh, orifice. Uh, back in the day, capillary tubes are still commonly used in refrigerators and ice machines, which is just a little tiny tube of, 
of uh, copper. So what's the purpose of this? To back up the liquid refrigerant and allow expansion, allow enough rapid expansion. It, it, it acts as a center point between the two halves of the system. And so not only does it, so really you can think of it in two different ways. You could describe it two ways and then both would be correct. You could describe it the way that Nathan Bishop just did, which it backs up the liquid, which is true. Because without your metering device, you don't have adequate pressure over here. You have, in order to have pressure, you have to be building pressure up against something. And that's, that's what's causing the pressure difference. Though. Correct. It's what's cr so, so over here, we have the high side of our system. And over here, we have the low side of our system. So your compressor and your metering device split those two halves of the system. Where your difference takes place. And so where, if, you've, if you guys have ever seen a system, where is the point in which you start to see temperature change from warm to cold? After the, right after the metering device. device. Directly after the metering device, but even more so than that, because we tend to think of an expansion valve as a whole part. We always like to think of things as entire parts. But it's the exact point at which the pressure drop occurs is where you see the difference. So right, the orifice. Evaporator. right where that or right where that orifice is, right where it goes from big to small, right where it restricts, that's where the pressure drop occurs, and that's where you see the difference in pressure. Okay. So what starts to happen now as it, as it's as the pressure is reduced? It starts to boil. It starts to boil because now you've reduced the bounds on that on those molecules, and they start to rapidly expand. Okay. So. This is the point where it, tra where it transfers from high side to low side. What is this line called? Between the metering device and the evaporator coil. Yeah, this is called the expansion line. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, where do you see an expansion line? There is a place that you see an expansion line, um, but you just don't think of it very often as an expansion line. Because in a regular home air conditioner, you don't, you don't have an expansion line. You have your expansion valve that's mounted pretty much right on that evaporator coil, and it just goes, really, these two are kind of married into one almost. Well, isn't the, isn't the evap coil your expansion line because you're expanding through the oh, evaporator it coil. It is. I mean, it, this is really just becomes an extension of the evaporator coil, really, mm -hmm. because you have what the state of refrigerant in this is what we call this flash gas, meaning it's in the process and of boiling. It should be that off. way pretty much from there straight throughout the evaporator. Yeah, correct, coil. pretty much, yeah. yeah. Um, why do we insulate the liquid line on a ductless system? Because it's not a liquid line. Because it's actually an expansion line. Because the metering device is in a condenser and a ductless system, all these are in one place, and now you have a line that travels through there. So this is a cold line. So your small line is a cold line. I mean, it's because it's actually not a liquid line at all. It's actually an expansion line. It's a low-pressure flash gas line, which is why it, it'll sweat. Now, they're not necessarily all that way, but that's how a lot of them are. So next line. We've got our suction line here. What, what's the state supposed to be in the suction line? Fully vapor. Yeah. Compressor only pumps vapor. Remember the basics here. Get back to the basics about what causes the different changes in, in condition of the refrigerant. What affects the pressures inside the system. Um, the, the best gift that I can give you is getting to the place where you start to interpret um, and uh, using logic and process of elimination to use the five different readings that you can take in order to tell you things about the system. So, break outside of your box of thinking, mm -hmm. air handler and condenser. You know, that's how we tend to think in the trade. It's not air handler and condenser. It's compressor, condenser, meter, device, evaporator. And it can be in any different kind of configuration in order to accomplish the goals that we're trying to accomplish. You with me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's it for today, and we'll uh, follow up with any questions you guys might have. Mm -hmm.